Hey everybody, welcome back to House of Grey Rabbit. It's been a long time, but uh, we are still alive. Uh, we found Gary, he was wandering around in the dungeon. <laughs> what movie brought us back from the brink of death? Dibbuck Box. The Dibbuck Box. Dibbuck. Pretty exciting. No, not no. exciting whatsoever. So this is a movie about a guy that's got a box that he got off the internet. Yes. He had to trade for it, even though he paid for it using Bitcoin, I believe. <laughs> All this weird stuff starts happening. A painting falls off the wall. Lights go on and off. All kinds of spooky stuff. Not really. Yeah. Uh, he smashes a glass against his face, but then the next day he has no scars. His bed moves because there's obviously... We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that. And it's supposed to be a true story. Right. This is a found footage film after all, yeah, which we yeah. know sucks no matter what. Because you can never make a found footage film that it makes any bit of sense or whatever. Especially with the director. Yeah. And this guy literally, he... He pulled an, an Orson Welles. He wrote, directed, and starred in the whole thing. And I have to give it to him for that. But my problem is, Dimmy Box is the, probably one of the worst of all time that we've ever watched. And what happened was, I watched it, then you watched it, then Gary watched it. We did not watch this together, so we had this varying idea of how bad this movie was in the first place. Point being is, the movie has no ending. Okay, it just ends with, I don't feel like myself anymore. Well, boo-hoo for you. And did he go back to his parents' house? He runs off his woman slash girlfriend slash best friend with the yeah the spirit box. They, they said that he did go back. They did go to his parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk for a minute well, about. Go ahead. I just want to point this out. Let's talk about the box itself. What it looks like. I mean, we're it's about this box. It's, okay, I'll give you the box. Doesn't look like much. It looks like something that he could have got at a flea market for like twenty bucks, and then just put some wax on or something. That's what I thought it looked like. Like someone had melted wax completely all over the box. Well, I, keep in mind though right. that when the Dimmick box whole thing was going on, a lot of these things were getting sold on eBay, and that's what they were. They were right. sealed with wax and everything. Although yeah. apparently, candle wax is the only thing that keeps ghosts from going outside of a box. Yeah. I thought ghosts did ghost things. So, <laughs> But let's talk about the absurdity of this film. Okay, so every effect in this is agreeably practical. It's either done by somebody pulling a string, or somebody in the next, you know, off the side of the camera, or in the case of the bed, somebody under a big person-shaped mound of, of what? Pillows. Pillows or something? Or blankets. Blankets. So we have, like, lamps being pulled off. We have the box opening and closing with a picture falling off the wall. Oh, we have lights blinking, which is very, very simple. My personal favorite is when things happen and he doesn't turn a 360 in the room. He just looks to the corner and goes, there's nobody here. There's nobody here. But he never points the camera behind him, which yeah. is where the other room is. What do you guys got that, that was the ludicrous parts of this? The whole movie. The, <laughs> uh, yeah, the... Pretty much the whole movie. The entire movie was horrible. I like somebody pointed out on the internet. They said, how can this be true because he's a bachelor and his apartment is so clean? Because I remember being a bachelor. Yeah. My house was never clean. This guy's house looks like either somebody's coming in and cleaning it for him or I, I don't know. It, the house Maybe looked like it was, like the, it was ghost. the ghost. Maybe it was the ghost to clean department, yes. and yeah, I need a ghost clean. in my house <laughs> right now. Right now. <laughs> like, very clean apartment. Like, oh, wow. really clean. And then he, like, shatters the glass on his face. And, and it he, doesn't bleed. He doesn't bleed. He doesn't cut. And he, you hear the glass hit the floor. He walks through the glass. And doesn't, doesn't bleed at all. And then he shows up the next day, and he's just like, blah, 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 blah. And there's no scars or nothing. Yeah. Well, like the like the bed. They look, He looked under the bed. You can directly see. He says, oh, there ain't nothing under the bed. You can directly see there was something under the bed, a big shadow of a person. Well, when they, when they, the they lamp recovered, fell off. Well, yeah, but we're, I'm talking about like when he the bed was jumping. And he's like, "There's nothing under the bed," but there's that, like we said, there's that big yeah. lump of cl of. Uh, I keep saying, I want to say clothes, but it's just a stinking blanket. <laughs> it's like a big person-shaped blanket lump that could easily have just been pushing it. And then he, there's a lot of fast cuts in this, yeah. where like he's just standing, staring at a camera while the lights blink, and that was actually good, like whole 45 seconds of that and that's the dumbest thing ever because in no way is this scary and that's what i got was i expected remember yeah. when okay you weren't watching it i kept watching it and so for instance like you guys can't see it but there's a door directly across the room from me 
And every time he would shoot, that door was directly behind him, and that's the kitchen. Yeah. And I expected Something the way... Happen. Well, you know how they do it nowadays, where you'll be watching something, and you'll be the person in the foreground will be talking to the screen, or they'll be talking to each other, yeah. and then in the background, like a shadow will yeah. walk across, and Look, you're like, yeah. ooh, because you know, and they yeah. don't. That's I kept I expecting, expecting to like, somebody's shadow to rise up yeah. in that kitchen, and I was like... And I kept trying to point out tropes to myself, like, oh, that's the... And there's the... Nothing happened. And nothing happened. Yeah. I don't know. It was just... I just think that... They they need he needs to do a collab with Bad Ben series. Oh, oh. <laughs> we found you and we brought you out of the dungeon. There's no yes. reason to talk about those words <laughs> or throw you back in the dungeon. Uh, right. Well, that's probably you know. And yes, they have done some more Bad Ben films, and yeah. y'all have watched them. Mm-hmm. I have not, so we don't have to talk about those just yet. We will come down, and I will break down and actually watch these stupid movies. It was it, what was worse is is the tagline. States that this is the most like in, impressive supernatural film stuff ever, and it's the most convincing after proof of the afterlife. And there's nothing in this movie that's scary, supernatural, no. or afterlife. No, nothing. And What's and and, and the, just the title. Uh, I mean, just saying it's a true story is beyond me. I and then I mean, here's here's your main thing, and we agree on that list. The director did everything. He directed, produced, blah 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 blah. And then there's one female on the cast list. Or for the credits. Yeah. And she's the girl that played the friend who in real life is his wife. And she's there for like five seconds. Yeah, she gets messed up because of Roger. Is it Roger? Yes. Roger says whatever on the spirit box and she runs away. Final thoughts. Gary, what do you think of the movie? Well, I really uh, wasted... What, what, how long was the movie? Two, like an, hour and a half. an hour and a half. Are you I that? mean, I, yeah. I, I just... I mean, he what doesn't better even, way of saying it? He doesn't even have words to describe I can't, how bad. Right. I mean, it was pretty bad. I mean, when I say exciting, that's in a sense of... <laughs> you really... It has made Gary lose yeah. the ability to speak English. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, Prime, what, what, what are your taking away thoughts for this? I agree with him. <laughs> yeah, you lose words. Um, you lose brain cells. Yeah. Here's my problem with it, and it's just one, it's a found footage film. Two, the f- even though I love practical effects, like uh, we've discussed before, like Paranormal yeah. Entity, yeah. that uh, Asylum, that Asylum movie. <laughs> um, you know, I love that because all the f- the effects in it were practical. I could do them right here without any kind of CGI or anything yeah. like that. So all the effects were nice that they were practical, but they weren't put in such a way that they made the movie believable. Yeah. And no matter how much you can spend on having you know somebody make sugar glass that you can break on your head and how you know whatever and the rig his camera rig was amazing too i'd say yeah. that you see that a lot too and it looks very professional not like anybody that would just make youtube would make well, it wasn't scary it wasn't, it scary, wasn't scary but scary. what got me was the parts where the lamps falling over like in the bedroom you can indirectly see someone pulling like i mean the cord well, to the lamp wobbles right and it wobbles, wobbles and then wobbles on the table and then it falls over <clears throat> And I understand they were trying to go for the poltergeist technique type thing where you don't see the ghost and, you know, what you don't see makes it more scary. And then if you're wondering uh, probably how the picture fell off the wall, uh, y'all pointed this out. They pointed this out to me. You know, someone could have been back behind. Y'all said... Yeah, just pull the thing and, and fall off. Right. And it does it numerous times. And then after it did it the first time, if it, I were the guy, I did, and I'm a bachelor, remember? I'd have just put it on, set it up against the wall. Like, I wouldn't even bother putting, like, some ghost will knock it off. They're going to have trouble doing it now. So, so my, my advice is, if y'all have not watched The Dibbit Box, go watch it. I'm pretty okay, sure. My advice is, do not listen to anything this madman has to say. <laughs> and yes, go watch it. I am <laughs> blinking Morse code for Save Me. Let's get down to ratings so we can let these good people get out of here. What is your rating, Prime? You're a veteran raider. <laughs> One bleh. Or just bleh. Bleh. <laughs> Gary, what do you rate it? Well, uh, zero is the highest number. I'm going to name it... See? Brain cells. I haven't rated anything in a long time. Like, God, give me a second here to like put everything together. I'll tell you what it is. I'll, I'll rate it one more found footage movie that sucks. See? Brain cells. Yeah. So, anyway, guys, that was our take on the Dybbuk box. We're saying it right, right? Yes. Dybbuk. 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 If, you, if we're not saying it right... Put it in the comments down below. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's not as long as some of the videos we've made, but we're getting back on our feet. We've been going for quite a while. So, if you've seen Dibbit Box, if you are going to see Dibbit Box, or maybe you've already made somebody else watch it, please leave a comment down below.
No one oh. subscribe. Uh, yeah. And you like. What? Like oh. and subscribe. I thought you said no one needs to subscribe. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> you're just. Like, share, and subscribe. Leave your comments down in in the section. And, of course, ring the bell. Yes. And uh, I do think that's it. So, guys, thank you once again for watching our video on the Dybbuk Box. This has been Great Rabbit 80, Primetime, and The Stash. And we will be seeing you.